I will be starting a small series on voltage regulators and uh, the charging system of the car. Um, for those of you that aren't really familiar with the term voltage regulators, this is what one looks like. Now, although the name says voltage regulator, it's actually more than that. It's actually uh, three times more than that. It's a voltage regulator, current regulator, and a cutout relay. All right. So basically, there's a what that does is it controls the electricity for the entire car and the battery. Now. Before I talk about a bit more about the voltage regulators, uh, some sometimes just people just call them regulators or uh, a few other names. There are a few other names for them, but I have to eliminate a few misconceptions about the charging system of the car. So there are three main things, um, three main components, and pretty much those are the only actually those are the only components to the charging system, on the electrical system on the car. And that's the generator or the alternator. That's, and the third one is the battery. The second one is the battery, or the battery and the voltage regulator. So, first of all, I, I, I got asked this question a few times and people are like, oh, my car doesn't start. Um, I think it's the alternator or the generator. Well that's kind of wrong that's 99 percent wrong because the uh alternator or the, or the generator this is the main misconception it does not influence the starting power of the car directly why do i say directly the only purpose of the generator or the alternator is to charge the battery that's all it does it doesn't affect the starting and I, there are a few exceptions and i'll explain in a bit but if you put in a new battery in the car and you just completely remove the alternator, it will start and it will run just fine. The only problem is that it will run for a limited amount of time. Um, depending on the battery, it could run for even as much as a day, a whole day. Um, it, but usually for a few hours if you have headlights off, all the electric, electrical system is off. If you're running a radio, AC, um, uh, high high beams, you know all the lights are on, and you, you're plugged in, you, you know your your GPS and the guy behind you is smoke, it's gonna run out in minutes. All right, in my case, it was in minutes. Um, so that's the only thing the the generator does is just recharge the battery. That's all it is. Once again, if you put in a new battery car will run and start just fine so if, if you have a new battery in and it's charging your car isn't starting it's nothing to do with the alternator or the generator nothing and not even the voltage regulator for that matter as well all right so that's the first misconception um, so what happens is I explained this in the pre previous videos which you should watch if you want to understand exactly how these things work is the generator or the alternator its electrical output is controlled by RPMs the faster the engine is running the uh, more electricity will be produced now all the electrical system on the car at least this car is 12 volts or if you go back to like the early 50s and before it used to be 6 volts now if you put 30 volts through a 6 volt system it will fry it everything will be damaged all the electrical uh, the spark plugs maybe not but the battery will be damaged starter will be damaged generator alternator will be damaged uh, all the lights will probably be burnt out gauges and the gauges that you have will probably be burnt out to radio you'll fry your radio everything that got too much electricity too much voltage or current will be fried so how do you uh, control that voltage uh, even as early as 1966, you'd have two ways of controlling the output. You'd have these things, regulators, okay? or you'd have transistorized regulators. 
So transistorized regulators use, just as the name suggests, uh, transistors um, which are called solid state because they don't have vibrating points like the regulators do. These regulators, they control electricity through a very simple and ingenious way. Um, it's just a relay or a switch. As soon as you hit too high of a voltage, it turns off. And then as soon as the voltage gets too low, it turns back on again. And by doing that thousands of times per second, you create a very um, stable electrical uh, system. So basically, when it's the same as for um, uh, lights. Your electrical system in the house is 60 hertz, which means the uh, electricity is vibrating turning on and off 60 times per second. So, you, although you do not see it, you do not realize it, your, your lights are turning on and off uh, 60 times per second. So in the car it's the same thing with the voltage regulator. It turns on and off, on and off, on and off. And that keeps the electricity uh, within the same, within the desired voltage and curved. All right. Uh, all right, that being said, there's, you need to have, there's an important distinction between current and voltage. Uh, we'd really have to go into phys physics, uh, mathematics to get a complete understanding of that, but simply put, voltage is the force of electricity, and current is the amount of electricity. So current is actually charge per time. So I always like to think of electricity as water. Imagine you have a garden hose. The voltage would be the force of that uh, water being pushed through that garden hose. Um, and current would be the, the diameter, so dependent on the diameter of that garden hose, or the amount of water coming out through, through it per time. So you could have, uh, think of as high voltage, low current as a very small, hose but with a lot very high pressure of water coming through so as soon as you turn that thing on you're, you're producing a water jet that's going let's say 10 10 meters All right if you have low current uh, if you have high current and low voltage you have let's say a firefighter's uh, hose it's like that big you know, that wide very large diameter but only still a lot of water passing through it but instead of it producing an arc it's just it's just flowing it's just flowing out so that's how you'd like to imagine the uh, current and voltage both of which need to be controlled by the voltage regulator um, so as usual I'm doing this series of videos because I had a problem so what was happening is um, the car would usually start just fine when it's cold. Very, the engine cranks really well. The starter cranks really well. It's a new starter, by the way, so I know no problem with the starter. Generator was fine. Voltage regulator is fine. So I'm suspecting it's a bad battery. But what's happening is the uh, car starts just fine, and then if I drive it for uh, 20 minutes and I try to restart it, still hot it will struggle, it will not start and go like, mm -hmm. struggle. Now there could be there two possible problems here. The engine was just rebuilt so with a new engine you don't really want to take it to the highway for two three hours. You want to just drive around and uh, maintain the, the RPMs not very high and just wait till the engine sets sets in right so and, and it's very noticeable as soon as I rebuilt the engine I could not turn it by hand I mean I could but it took it required a lot of force now after maybe 80 80 kilometers or so maybe 100 the engine is turning uh, fine by hand so it it's just those new rings are sitting in to the, uh, the cylinders and uh, so when the engine gets hot everything is tighter 
right? Um, so that's why it's absolutely imperative that you do not overheat to rebuilt engine. No, no engine, but especially not a rebuilt engine. Um, I did not overheat it. I kept an eye out on the gauge at both at all times. But one funny thing that I was noticing is that after I shut the car off, the uh, temperature would climb. Okay, it would get um, from 195 normal operating temperature would go up to about 220 Fahrenheit. So it did climb. The temperature did climb a little bit. Uh, I think that's just the uh, uh, heat that's it doesn't have. Once the engine stops you don't have any more air going through it so it does tend to retain the heat rather than having it being dissipated so once one thought that I had is that the, uh, the car was hard to start because of the rebuild that the engine is too tight when, once it's hot okay but and what and what was happening is you'd wait if I wait if I waited till the engine cools down again then the car would start up uh, pretty much fine not as well as the first time so once again so basically I could start the engine cold fired up no problem uh, could not turn it start it hot uh, wait till it cools and starts all right uh, the voltage I was measuring the output voltage we were at 12.6 now that tells me it's a little bit low which takes me to the second uh, very important concept in charging systems here, um, which is voltage drop. Okay, so whenever you you have um, electricity, something that's using up electricity, you will have a voltage drop. So how how can you understand this? Imagine you just have a garden hose um, with water just flowing out. You have no resistance to that water. The whole force that's pushing that water in, be it a pump, um, be it whatever, it's it's just the whole, f it's not losing any force. Now imagine you put that that valve through, uh, through a shower and then through a sprinkler, um, one after the other. So let's say you have that valve, that hose going to a shower and then to a sprinkler. So it's, it's losing a lot of that force because it's going through each of those components. So electric, so in the car it's the same thing. You have a voltage drop when you turn on the uh, air conditioning or the heater motor uh, or the heater blower, not the heat, or the heater motor, yeah. Um, anything that's taking up electricity, you're gonna have a bit of a voltage drop. Now, the, I, I said this before, the thing that uses the most electricity in a car is the starter motor, that's the biggest uh, electrical component in a car um, and it's it is the one that takes up more electricity there's a big voltage drop and the current is very high as well uh, anywhere from uh, over 100 amps of current uh, 60 may, maybe si usually about 60 current 60 amps of current now just think of it this way your uh, the average 220 volt stove is rated for 30 amps okay in each in each phase so and uh, to compare it a little light bulb is using maybe uh, two three amps of electricity so the starter does take a lot of electricity so usually the best way to determine whether you have a starter or a battery problem is uh, I'd like to clean up starters so it, if you have an old starter that's full of grease and dirt, uh, it's probably not working as it should. So I like to clean them up or replace them if you want to get a new one. Um, and then you definitely know if, if it's still hard to start, you know it's the battery. There's only two things that could, could influence a hard start on a car. Uh, assuming it's not mechanical, okay? if you have a seized up engine, and yeah, it will not start. But assuming the engine is okay, uh, anything mechanical is uh, not seized up or full of rust, then there's only two possible things that could influence, could cause a hard start. And that's the, uh, the uh, starter itself or the battery. 
Uh, once again, another possible problem could be like a vapor lock, a hydro lock, um, coolant inside the cylinders. But once again, that's all mechanical. Assuming the engine is fine, uh, you don't have nasty stuff on it, flywheel, transmission, all that is in good shape. But only the battery or the starter could be your issues. Okay? Forget about the generator and the alternator. All they're doing is charge, recharging the battery, keeping the battery recharged. So they do not cause hard start. Um, all right, so uh, first thing I'd like to do is this battery, I bought it brand, brand new uh, about five or six years ago. So that tells me it should sort of be at the end of its life. Um, another thing that I noticed is Last night when I returned, I actually had to push start the car to get it started. So that's a good thing about having a manual transmission or some automatic transmissions. You can do that, but mostly you can't. So all you do is push the car up a hill, and then, or you get a bunch of people to push it, and then once it gains velocity, instead of the starter motor turning the engine, you use the wheels to turn the engine. So you put it in a, in a high gear so that um, it's easy for the engine, or for the car to turn the engine, and then you press the clutch, engage the clutch so that the car get, gains velocity. If you just leave it in gear, it's going to be hard to gain velocity. As soon as you gain enough velocity, you let go of the clutch so that the uh, transmission engages to the engine, and then it starts turning the engine, and it should start the car that way which is what I did and it worked just fine. Now, when the car was on, I was getting about 12.6 volts, which if you think, okay, the system is 12 volts, if it's operating at 12 volts, good. Uh, not really, because of the voltage drop. We should have about three volts, four volts voltage drop. So the actual voltage that you should be getting at the battery is, about 14 volts, and that depends on temperature and uh, uh, other circumstances as well. So the manual actually lists a few uh, voltage voltages, voltage ranges, um, and it should be like I said. Today we're at about 65 Fahrenheit or about 20 degrees, so voltage should be at about. 14.4 to 15.4 volts so once again or although you're thinking well that could be dangerous because the voltage is higher it isn't because you have to compensate for the voltage drop right so if you actually want 12 volts to go to a light bulb you have to have a bit more voltage to compensate for the loss of electricity the loss of voltage on the other light bulbs uh, ignition system, starter, uh, blower motor, and everything else, okay? So, that's uh, that's the deal here. Uh, I will try to turn the car on, but as you, hopefully, like, at this point, I can listen to it, and I can tell you, I can know what a good starting looks like, keep, sounds like. And if the car's like, yeah, 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 then be, a lot of people say, oh, it's an old car. Well, it's not. It should start up fine just like any other car. You should have a lot of speed uh, for the engine. It should turn on right away. If it's going like yeah, 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 then that's, that tells you, that tells me 99% of the cases it's a bad battery. Uh, which it should be in my case because it's, uh, it's already an old battery. <coughs> So the first thing I'd like to see, now another thing that could be happening is the battery could somehow be discharged. So maybe somebody leaves a, a door open, leaves a, some light on, uh, leaves the radio on, uh, something that's causing a short circuit somewhere, something that's causing uh, the battery to drain, be drained of electricity. Uh, maybe overnight so in my case the way that I got the car was uh, even if you turn this, the ignition key 
off, the lights would still remain on. So there were two occasions where I forgot the lights on. Uh, unfortunately, the battery was still new, so I, 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 I got back and the car still started. But uh, you don't really want to do, you don't want to really have something like that. I don't know if that's the way it came originally, if I recall correctly. That is the way it came originally, but it's bad. So I changed that. And when you turn the uh, key off, all the systems are off. Lights, radio, everything is off. The only thing that I hardwired it, which is, um, is the horn. Okay, so if the car is off, you could still act, hit the horn. But it's basically connected directly to the battery. There's no, the only switch is the horn itself. So, uh, I just, no particular reason for doing that, just, uh, thing is with the light if you forget a light on there and you're in the day you don't really notice it but if you have you leave your horn on horn on or it's uh, somehow damaged that it stays on and you start straining your electric your battery there's no way you cannot notice it <laughs> but anyways that's that um, well first of all I'm gonna measure the uh, voltage at the battery We are at 11.76 volts. Uh, I did notice that the battery was kind of hot when, after the car was running as well as the generator, but uh, the voltage was not, like I said, it was a bit too low. So, uh, back to voltage regulators. Um, okay. that I'll zoom in but we're at 11.74 volts which is low like I said the battery is supposed to be at at least at 12 volts if the car is off so it is a little bit low uh, this tells me this suggests to me based on other evidence that the battery is bad so a bad battery basically it can remain charged while the car while it's being turned on you know being charged by the generator but it can't hold that charge so as soon as even as soon as you turn the car off a good battery uh, will stay charged uh, a bad battery will lose that charge just from nothing just uh, can't produce any more electricity uh, at some point you could have it so bad that even though the, the charger or the alternator which is just a battery charger or the generator um, are charging it, it will actually not be able to hold the charge. So uh, my father tells me that he used to have a Jeep and you, you could drive it and if you, but you couldn't turn the headlights on. If you turn the headlights on the car would die immediately. So <laughs> that was a very, very, very bad battery. Uh, they just always look for a place to park it in a hill so that they could push start it. So it is, it is fun. It's a funny story. Back then, lots of stories. Of, uh, everybody used to have a problem with their car, especially batteries. And they just had to go, you know, you're driving somewhere and then your car stopped or, you know, you lost the charge of the battery. You just get a bunch of people, whoever was close to you, and they'd have help you push the car, push start the car. Okay, so... I just thought that would be interesting, but in my case here, I should be able to get a new battery, but I just want to make sure that is the problem and that it's not the voltage regulator. Um, and by the way, the batteries do go bad even though they haven't been used. So if you get a brand new battery that's 10 years old, uh, chances are it will not be good. Why? Because the battery is composed of lead acid and that chemical reaction is what produces electricity after 10 years the whole thing has just corroded itself and uh, reacted and there's little to no uh, reaction anymore because just by the amount of time spent on, this, on the shelf there are things called dry cell batteries 
or a dry batteries which uh, they don't have any liquid in it and that that those kind of batteries you can store them for as long as you want because they're not filled with any chemical um, you only fill it up with the chemical when you go to use it so when you buy it so you but these ones they're already filled from the factory with with the acid uh, sulfuric acid it's not very not highly concentrated but still dangerous um, so stay away from well it's never been used but it's 10 15 years old yeah it's probably not going to be any good anymore uh, so that's that now the second thing is the uh, voltage regulators themselves so we pretty much discussed everything here except the voltage regulators so first of all there are two types of battery chargers the old generator and which was later replaced by the alternator and then once again the only difference between them is that one produces DC current direct current directly which is the generator and the alternator as the name suggests it alternates current which then needs to be rectified back to DC direct current through uh, diodes that's the only uh, major difference between them now the important thing is the voltage regulators for them do not interchange. So if you have a generator, you have to get a voltage regulator for a generator. If you have an alternator, you have to get a voltage regulator for the alternator. And how do you know the difference? A generator, I'm a big fan of the generator. It's more simpler and it's more sturdy than an alternator. Uh, the way you tell the difference from their corresponding voltage regulators is that the voltage regulators for the generators they only have three terminals a battery, a field, and an armature. It's very simple. You can't battery goes to the battery, field goes to the F terminal, arm or A goes to the A terminal on the gen. Not a complicated at all. Uh, here on now this one has four terminals. One almost the same. F field A armature B battery but also has an I terminal. Now this one, the four terminal type is for alternators. All right? So inside this one only has, although it has four terminals, it only actually has two relays. Now remember I was telling you there's only or three units if you will. I showed you this Show you this one once again just for sake of argument. So it has three parts to it. One, two, three. They're very neat looking things. So it has a usually there's fine wire, red wire, and then two with a big thick wire. And so the one with three little towers, if you will, these are for generators. The ones for the alternators only have two. Well, that's the main difference. You cannot interchange them. They don't work. Uh, I'm sure there would be for any electrical genius out there, anybody will take the time. There is a way you could potentially interchange them by modifying them. But in my case, I actually have uh, four voltage regulators. So for the generator, in my case, it was a bit more difficult to find it for the alternator. And I just switched back to the generator. So that's that. Uh, third thing that you really have to watch out for voltage regulators is the ground term polarity. So this one says negative ground only. So just as the name suggests, you have to have the negative terminal of the battery going to the car. Uh, this other one, which I bought from eBay, it says here positive or negative ground so you can use it for whichever way you want so basically this works for whichever 12 volt car uh, whatever you could even put in a modern car if you wanted to uh, happy to the video is going to end as we reach the 30 minute maximum I'll see you in the uh, next next part part 2 of the video